Hello and welcome to Sarah's Stitch. My name is Sarah. This is episode, oh no. I think this is episode 29. I can't be 30 yet. I'm going with 29. And this is my knitting podcast here on YouTube where I can chat to all of you about my knitting projects I've worked on, sometimes crochet, uh, so that my friends and family do not kill me from incessantly talking about knitting because none of them care <laughs> anymore. And if you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. Uh, my name is Sarah. I'm 27 years old. I am an accountant in New York City. I live in Hoboken, New Jersey, so right across the river, like 10, 10 minutes away and probably 20 minutes, but uh, so it is busy season. I am very overtired, I'm also slightly hungover. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long weekend, so I'm filming this on March 10th. Hopefully this will be out to you in the next few days, but I wanted to update you on my progress. Keep everyone in the loop, let them know what's going on, and I have some finished objects to share, which I'm very excited and happy about, so I figured I would brag about them a little bit. So let's get started with uh, what I'm wearing. So this is my Ingrid sweater, it might be too dark to see anything, but this is my Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit. I made it out of La Bienna May Cori Confetti in the color Mallard, and I held it with a strand of mohair in the color, I don't know if you're even gonna be able to see it, the color Isle of Sky, which is like a little, it's like a bit bluier of a hue. I love this sweater. This is like, I think I've said it before, this is absolutely my most worn sweater. It is a lot more oversized than the pattern calls for because I didn't gauge so much. And it's stretched out a little bit over time, but I love it still anyway. I would absolutely knit another one of these again, um, just in like a more standard color, like not standard, a more neutral color I would absolutely do. Especially so that it's a little different from this one, but I love this so much. I love this pattern. I think I need to make another one soon. Um, all the information should be on my Ravelry um, about this and everything else I talk about today. Uh, you can find me there. My Instagram is linked down below as well and project page is, project pages, project pages for all of the projects I'm going to talk about today are linked down below as well, which should have any information on them, needle sizes, yarns, sizes I make, all that good stuff should be in the projects themselves. Uh, just for reference, I know I try and do this sometimes and then I forget most of the time, but for reference, I have about a 90, 91 centimeter bust. And so I generally make around a size small or medium garments. I have a size nine foot, US size nine foot. So that is usually the size I make and it's typically 64 stitches, but I will chat about those things as we come to them. So let's get started with finished objects. The first finished object are these socks. So I believe I showed them last week or last episode as a as a hoe, um, as a half finished object. But these are my Woolberry socks. Oh, I'm twisting in this chair. Um, these are my Woolberry socks from the February Collective in 2023. So for every month last year, I got a sock set and I hadn't knit them yet. So I figured now's the time to do it. So this was February, 2023. Oh, I'm not gonna remember the colors. I believe the um, tonal semi-solid, I forgot what Bethany technically calls it, but the contrast color I believe is called Swoon. It's this really pretty dusky rose. And then the main color is, no, other way around. The main color is called Swoon and it's, I mean, you can see, I didn't talk about it last, last week. So uh, it's light pinks, dark pinks and like little, little specks of like yellowies, browns. This one right there, I don't know if it's coming out, but um, Swoon and the contrast color is called Three Little Words. So finish those up. Uh, I did these on, <clears throat> I did two by two ribbing for the, ribbing 
uh, I did a butterfly heel by Kay Jones for the heel, which is kind of like a short row heel, but no short row rows involved. Um, I like it. I will report back after I wore, wear these more because um, I, I haven't worn them yet. But about how I like the heel in general, I know Kay talks about on when she usually makes these that uh, their daughter Bryony and I think Dan also um, like this heel and they like the fit of it. But I tend to go for, I usually tend to go for a heel flap just because it feels like it's more, I don't know if I would say secure, but that's what I tend to go for. But I've been trying to explore other options and my Woolberry socks are incredibly hard wearing. So, and long lasting, despite me trying to put holes in them, none of them have been put holes in them. So I figured this was a good time to try a different heel. Uh, the first sock I knit fully on Magic Loop and I did it just a standard wedge toe. I think the one I follow is the one from Kay Litton's patterns, Crazy Sock Lady's patterns. Um, but I don't typically look at it anymore just cause all up here. Uh, but the first one fully did on Magic Loop. The second one, I don't know which one is the first and which is the second, but uh, I gave up on Magic Loop cause I hated it so much about here on whichever one it was and just did nine inch circulars for the remainder of the sock. And it went by a lot quicker because I am not a magic loop girl. I have come to that conclusion. I can handle it if I have to for toes, but even for toes, I think I prefer double points. So I think the magic loop sock needles are out of here. I also bend them so much, they're so bent. So. Uh, 64 stitches, two millimeter needles, both for the Magic Loop and the nine inch. I think that's it. And this is, oh, I do 80 rows for the foot and I believe I did 45 for the leg and 20 rounds of ribbing for the rib. So that is the socks. And then my other finished object is, my sweater number 18 for my mom. So this is done, very happy about it. And I'm going to, I literally just finished binding off the sleeve. So after this, I will be putting it in a little soak, giving it a little bit of a stretch and see how I like the fit of it. I think it's gonna be long enough for my mom and everything, but let me talk about the yarn and everything first. So. It is sweater number 18 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I knit the size, I think I knit the third size. I don't know if she goes by numbers or letters. Either small or medium, or it was definitely the third size, so whatever the third size is. And I knit this out of BC Garn Semalia Melange in the color nine, which I got from Ginger Twist in Edinburgh in September. My mom picked it out and then I knit her a sweater. And then uh, I knit it with a strand of Isayer, I don't know if it's gonna pop, show up, but Isayer Silk Mohair in the color 44. I think you can see the core, which is a lighter blue than the BC Garn was, but it um, made a nice heather, which like, I like. I don't think it's super obvious that it's in there. So I think my mom will like it. And I followed same needle sizes. I did add, you can see on the sleeves, I added quite a bit of extra length. Uh, the sleeves are supposed to stop here where the decreases stop. And I added about 16 more rows before I did the ribbing, just so it was as long as my mom's arms are. But other than that, I did not modify. I lengthened the body as well, which I spoke about last episode. I think I added 20 more rounds for the body. And I think that is it about this. Anything else? I don't think so. So yes, this is my sweater number 18. I enjoyed knitting it. I don't think I would knit it again because 
the texture doing the pearls with the five millimeter needles really did not spark joy for my wrists. Um, my wrists were always a little bit sore after working on this and I had to take breaks more than I would have liked and just do something on stockinette or a sock or something just because I the purling was uh, a lot. Um, which typically, I, purling does not bother my wrists. I don't know if it was a combination of purling and the five millimeter needles that did it or what it was, but the purling was not it. So I either need to figure out a new way to purl if I wanted to make this again, or I will not be making this again, but uh, it does, it's beautiful. And I, I hope my mom really likes it. And I would recommend people make it. Um, I just don't know if it's high enough reward for me to make one for myself, if that makes sense. I, I think I'd rather do one of her other textured knits before I did this one again. I want to do the Moby sweater before I do this again. <laughs> Absolutely. Or like even the Esther sweater, but I, if I'm doing another My Favorite Things knitwear pattern, I would maybe pick a different textured one just so I get a little bit of a different experience. It did go very quickly because it was five millimeter needles, which was very nice. So this is going to get blocked and either shipped down to my mom or if I wind up going down for Easter, I may give it to her for Easter, but then I feel like she may not have as much of a chance to wear it. So that's just my dilemma with that. All right, moving on to works in progress, half finished objects, etc. cetera. Uh, we can start with my half finished objects. So I was on a bit of a sock kick the last week, two weeks. I think it's been two weeks since I filmed. So I finished the February socks and realized I had no stockinette knitting that didn't involve helical knitting, which I don't consider stockinette, like true stockinette knitting, because you still have to pay attention to stuff, um, which is a me problem. So I've been on a bit of a sock kick. So these socks are just plain old afterthought heel socks. Um, the heel I used was the umbrella heel from K Jones, but I just did a normal wedge toe. I don't even know if you could see them before, but I just did a normal wedge toe. And the yarn for these is Mind the Gap by Trailing Clouds, which I got on Etsy a couple of years ago, but it is all of the London tube line colors in a sock. So. It's so fun. I love self striping yarn. I like forget how much I love it and then I knit something in it and then I'm, I'm, and I'm obsessed. So I knit this one I think in two days and I did 10 rounds of twisted one by one rib, uh, 35-ish rounds before I put the heel in or put the markers in for the heel and then did 80 rounds for the foot and then put the afterthought heel in. Um, and I wanted them to be mismatched. So I pulled out a couple colors. So you can see that the toe ended on the purple and then I did the afterthought heel, which ended right on the blue. So I wanted it to be a little bit further off than like this much. So I pulled out to the brown, which is, I think halfway in between the color sequence. I think there's 10 stripes, 10 different colored stripes in this. So I started with the brown for the second sock and I am only on, I think I'm about 10 or so rounds of stockinette into the leg. But I wanted these to be my stockinette knitting socks and um, they've done the job and it's self-striping and it's so fun. I am an odd over what heel to do for too long that like I could have done the heel much quicker and been done with the sock quicker, but I can't, couldn't decide if I wanted to do a heel flap or not, or if I wanted to do an afterthought heel, just because 
I love, 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 love my heel flaps, as I've already said this episode. And I have a couple, not even a couple, I have one pair of socks, I think, that has an afterthought heel in it that I wear. And I don't love them, but I don't know if it's because I don't love them because of the f like how high the sock is or because of the heel. So I guess these will be the determining factors, the determining socks on the afterthought heel for me. Um, but I also don't really love the look of a stripey heel that's like mix max, mix match stripes. I was going to, if I wasn't being impulsive with these, I would have gotten another color that would have gone with these. Um, I was thinking of if I had a purple, like a dark, a dark violety purple, I think would have been really good with these because there is another line. Um, I think it's the Elizabeth line that's like a, a deepy, like true blue violet purple, um, which could have been fun for the heel. If I had had that around and accessible, then I probably would have done that and a normal heel flap and gusset, but I did not. So here we are. Uh, but this will be fine. There's going to be plenty of leftover yarn. So if I decide I want to make a new pair with purple heels or a different kind of heel, I will have more than enough. Uh, I think this is only, this is not much yarn. Maybe at most it's 25 grams of yarn for this song, but I think it's even less than that. It might be 15 or so. Uh, and I'm knitting, I knit this and I am knitting obviously on a nine inch circular needle, uh, two millimeters. So that is those. And hopefully they will have a little bit more progress next time you see them. The next sock I'm working on is my, oh shoot is my March Woolberry Collective skein from last year. So the main color I believe is called Homebody and the contrast color was called Sweatshirt, I wanna say. Um, God. Putting socks on blockers with nine inch, nine inch circulars is not something that one should do often. Oh, we already lost a stitch. Well, and I am knitting the Prairie Socks by Kay Jones out of this one on 2.25 millimeter needles. So this is what it's looking like. I did the main color for the uh, cuff 2x2 two two rib, which I believe is what the pattern calls for. Uh, we have the whole the beautiful texture here. I'm not sure how well it comes out in the camera, but you can see it, I promise. And then. The heel is a very subtle difference. Uh, this is the gray and it is an eye of partridge heel with a square turn. And I am on the foot. The reason I did these on 2.25s is because, first of all, I couldn't find any more two millimeter, two millimeter nine inch circulars anywhere in and like, I literally can't find them at all. I don't think they exist anymore in my apartment. Uh, so I had a pair of 2.25s laying around. So I figured I would knit a pair on that and see how I liked it. I did go down to a 56 stitch sock because I went up a needle size. And I knew that if I did a 64 stitch sock, it'd be way too big on me, even with the ribbing. Uh, Cause the texture of this, it's not really ribbing, but it does kind of suck in a bit because of the twisted stitches. Um, so I didn't want it to be super loose on me. So I did a 56 stitch sock. I don't hate the fabric it's making. Um, I, I'm gonna have to wear them to make up my final mind, obviously, but I think I like the density of a two millimeter sock better than the two and a half millimeter sock. And that's probably why these, like my Woolberry socks never disintegrate because I I never knit socks on 2.25 millimeter. Um, but it's going quickly and I would 
consider doing 2.25s for like gift socks, I think, going forward, just so that um, they're a little bit easier to match to the wear, like the wear, it, it's more universal for wearers, I think, than having a tighter sock potentially. Um, like my dad's socks and things like that, I'm probably gonna do 2.25s uh, and just do 74 stitches, not 74, 64 stitches for his socks going forward, just cause it does make it go a little bit quicker, which is nice. I need to find my sock ruler to measure the foot when I get closer to the toe because I don't know how many rounds to do in 2.25. So that is going to be my only challenge with these. But so far, I really like the pattern. I have not made this pattern before. It's very easy to memorize. There's only one round where you really do anything out of three. Um, so yeah, this is them. And then I'm gonna do a contrast, the contrast color for the toe as well. So we had Cuff and toe, heel and toe, and maybe the April ones, if I get to them, will be cuff and heel. That feels wrong. I don't know why. That that combo feels wrong, but we'll see. I think I definitely will have an I have enough to do all three, and I have done in the past, so I may just do all three or just do like a two round at the top and then do the other two. But so next up for works in progress, we have, let's just go through my dad's sweater. So this is the hands foam. I always forget what it's called, if that's the correct word or not, but I'm pretty sure it's called the hands, hands home sweater by Petite Knit. I am knitting this out of Sorella yarn DK, like classic DK, I think in the color Am I Laughing or Crying? And this is from the Gilmore Girls Collection. This is the Suki colorway. It's this really pretty, I should say handsome. Um, it's this really nice, I would say like a true burgundy, maybe leaning a bit brown, but it's very nice. Um, like a cooly burgundy color. I have split for the sleeves. I use the My The Gab yarn <laughs> to hold my stitches. And I am quite literally two rounds past sleeve separation. And my skein, one of my skeins of yarns um, is out. So I need, I stopped working on this because I have to wind up a ball, of, a ball of yarn, which I don't feel like doing. So it hasn't gotten any love really in the last week or so, but I would like to, if I can finish this before Easter, so that if I do go down, for Easter, I can give them both their sweaters or maybe I could finish this before Easter and then give it to him. I need to wind up the yarn for this. I think that's what I'm going to do tonight and that's what I'm going to work on this evening. Uh, I'm knitting the size medium. Oh, there's a lid on that. Okay, I'm leaving the lid off. Um, I'm knitting a size medium, which is his preferred size. It's about the same um, finish circumference that his Marius was. We're shooting for about 109, 110 centimeter finished bust circumference. And I'm going to knit this one an inch or two longer than I knit the Marius in the body and like maybe half an inch or an inch longer in the sleeves because that was the feedback from the Marius. So yeah, that's what we're doing. I'm knitting it all to pattern, same needle sizes as she recommends. So uh, the body's four millimeter needles and I believe the ribbing was three and a half millimeter needles or maybe it was three, but um, yeah, so it's going. <sighs> Nothing much to report as of yet, just a sweater, so. I need to decide about yarn if I'm going to just risk it and not heal up full knit for a little while or if I should heal up full knit. It's been a pretty consistent yarn so far, so I think I could get away without heal up full knitting, but I don't want it to be obvious that I stopped because there is, I mean, it is a tonal yarn, so I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera, but 
there is like a variegation between the lights and the dark so I don't really want it to pull if I can avoid it especially now that I'm going to be knitting at the same circumference for a while for the body um probably should just heal up on it and be a good little knitter so that is the hand foam and my final sweater is my terrazzo sweater so I've talked about this at nauseum it feels like so I will be somewhat blowing through this but I finished the ribbing on the other sleeve I believe it was the sleeve that I finished and I am almost through the ribbing on the bottom of the body and I will just have the turtleneck left to do and I will be done so this is the trouser sweater by petite knit i'm knitting a size small which is the size i typically make in petite knit patterns and i'm knitting it out of the recommended yarn and the recommended not recommended the pattern sample colorway so uh i would show you the balls but they're a little bit gross so <laughs> i'm knitting it out of the noro silk garden solo Silk Garden Sock Solo in the color S1 Lot Q. I don't know if that matters or not about the color a lot, which is the color that Petite Knit originally knit hers out of. And the mohair I'm using is the same as well. It's the Isayer Mohair. I believe the color is six. Second, let's see, yep, color six. I don't know if it has a real name or not. And it's, this one's pretty, so I'll show you. Um, uh, like a ballet pinky mohair. So I don't know if the mohair is doing a lot for the color. It's definitely fuzzing it up a bit, which is nice. Um, but it hasn't really, I don't think, dulled any of the colors, which is nice because I love how much the colors are changing. <laughs> the one brown stripe kills me. <laughs> kills me um doesn't appear literally in any other skein so far but I just have a big brown stripe so and I believe this is my fourth ball of Noro that I have so I'm gonna have some extras left over let's see how many ends I can find in here there's one It's gotta be, I can't imagine this is three balls. This seems like more than three balls of yarn. Maybe it is. Um, but I'm gonna have leftover yarn because I definitely overbought the yarn. So I need to think of what I'm going to do with the leftovers. If anyone has any suggestions, please let me know what you think I should make with it or if you have any recommendations for patterns using it. Um, don't think it's going to be enough for another sweater, but maybe as color work or as an accessory or something, I should have enough. But it is, I love it. I can't wait to wear it. I really want to finish this for this winter. So I need to get moving on all of the sweaters that I have. Not just this one, because there's more. There's always more. But I think that is it. Um, on the terrazzo sweater so i'm almost at my youtuber <laughs> success rate when i've made a terrazzo sweater i need to make a sophie scarf next and then i'll be part of the club but that is the terrazzo sweater and that is it for works in progress that i brought in to show you all i don't i haven't really worked on anything else that i can think of that's gotten like a decent amount of progress my little crystal sweater has one sleeve done and needs the other sleeve but i think that's how it was last week or last episode i worked a little bit on my tessellated which is still not done the sleeves need to be done and the neck so i'm thinking i'm going to work on my dad's sweater i'm gonna finish up the ribbing on my terrazzo and then i'm gonna go to my little crystals do the sleeve really quick because the sleeve flies by it's five millimeter needles and then um 
focus on the tessellated and hopefully I can finish out all of the pending sweaters. Oh, and I have my sweater number nine light. If I can finish up all my pending sweaters before I leave for the summer, I will be a very, very happy person. But that is for plans. I will talk about yarn acquisitions and then get into plans. So yarn acquisitions, I got a couple of packages from Molly at the Homespun House. I got first my Patreon yarn from January. So this is the favorite song, favorite love song sock set. Um, so typically she names the sock sets based off of the main color. So it's, it's really fun orange with um, pinks and green speckles in it. And then just a dusky pink, which I think is not one of her standard colors so i think this is also just like a it looks like comfort kind of but it's warmer than comfort but it's not hearth either so it may be hearth but i think it's just molly dyed it specifically for the sock set and then the minis for the month are the most wonderful time peony and window frost so I'm going to assume that uh, this green is the most wonderful time. Pink is peony. I can figure that one out. And this is window frost, the blue, but they are very, very pretty. And these will be the first colors in the next Patreon blanket that I make. I still have not decided what I'm going to make for it. If I'm going to do crochet or knit and what I'm going to do as far as that goes. So I'm thinking right now of doing squares of some sort. I don't know if I wanna do like a Battenberg situation with like a bunch of little squares in these colors or if I wanna do like a granny square blank blanket but do diagonal or like a linen stitch I could go for a linen stitch. I do love a good linen stitch and like hold or like hold them double just so that they're a little bit quicker and I don't have a DK blanket. So I think that would be fun to do. And I think Molly's yarn is good to hold double, but I don't want to lose any of the speckles with the crochet. So if I hold a double, don't know if I should do a knit blanket. The crochet is just so quick. So that is my dilemma. I do like the idea of a linen stitch, so maybe I'll hold it double and do a linen stitch square or triangles or something similar to the temperature blanket that never, never was finished and was just given up. But yeah, so sorry for the horns, but this is the Patreon yarn. And then I got a sock set. So this is the Happy Birthday Luna sock set. So this year, Molly is doing um, a one-of-a-kind dye for different Harry Potter characters for their birthday months. So the first one that came up is Luna Lovegood. So it is just the most fun. Like, ugh, it's so pretty. It reminds me a lot of um, like two of her skeins she had a few summers ago that like are combined. I knit one of them. I think it was like, <sighs> I can't remember. It's, I made crunkle socks out of it, but it was like oranges, pinks, and yellows. And then she also had one that was like oranges and blues, but I love this together. I, this is gonna be, this is coming. I, mean, I don't think I'm gonna knit this right now. I think this is gonna come with me over the summer. Cause this just to me screams like happy summer sunshine. I don't know why, but it does. So I think I'm going to hold off on casting this on until summertime, but it is gorgeous. And I can't wait to see how it knits up because there's like so many different colors in here. It's wild. So I love it. And I don't know what the contrast is. Maybe marmalade. Marmalade with a German accent, but it is oh, it's so good. I can't wait to see what the Ron Weasley one is. Uh, I ordered that a couple weeks ago. I think it should be shipping soon because it closed. I want to say end of February it closed. And now the current one in the shop, I believe is Remus Lupin, who 
I love and I feel as though Molly will be taking all of my money with this club because I think I'm gonna have to get quite literally all of them because I'm not gonna be able to say no because how do you pick a favorite? They're like children, except fictional characters. So that is it for the yarn, the knitting, everything. Um, I'm going to go through plans and like upcoming stuff. So if you don't wanna stick around for that, or if you made it this far, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry like, this was rambly. It feels like I've been rambling for, thank you. Thank you, Cars. Um, I feel like I've been a bit rambly because I'm tired and hungover. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna go through plans and summer plans. So uh, knitting plans are, I wanna keep up with doing the Patreon socks, not the Patreon, the collective socks from last year. I wanna keep up with that because I think it will be fun to have a year of Patreon or collective socks at the end of it. I would also, if I could, <laughs> like to do it with my Patreon skeins as well because I don't want them to like, I feel bad that they just always sit here, but I need to get them because I love them so much. Um, so I think I'm gonna try and keep up with that of doing a Patreon and a collective sock each month. The, col uh, the Patreon yarns are typically uh, 70 gram sock sets. So you can definitely make a short repair with them. So I think that they will go by quicker and I tend to, like my normal socks aren't exactly long socks. So I think I can get through two sets of socks a month, especially if I keep up with my knitting while on all my calls at work because it distracts me from not being the nicest person in the world to people who are making mistakes on my teams. Um, but I think I can do that. Do like, so March, like it's March 10th and I've got this much of a sock done. I feel like I could do, like, I think if I do like 10 to 15 rows a day on two sets of socks, by the end of the month, I'll have four socks. That might be a little bit overzealous of me, but I feel like it's possible. So that's what I wanna do. I want to finish all of the sweaters I currently have on the needles that I've been actively working on. So the two I showed today, my little crystals, my sweater number nine light, which has one sleeve done, I think. On the first sleeve of it and no I think I'm done with my other sleeve hold on let me go get that okay definitely not on the other sleeve but getting a little bit more of a works in progress update I am I think I am almost done with this sleeve until the ribbing looks like I am. I don't think it was as far as the other, the last episode. So I think I have to do one, two, three. I want to say I have to do seven total decreases and I've got six done. So I have one and a bit sleeves to finish on this. I have one sleeve to do on my little crystals. I've got two sleeves to do on my tessellated and the neck to do on the tessellated. The tessellated is coming along slowly but surely. I think, so I put it in a bag because I just put it in a bag. <laughs> and I haven't looked at it since I put it in the bag because it hasn't been on the top of the stack of multiple sweater whips I have going. So I think I need to take it out of the bag so I work on it because it's at the point where the the colors aren't changing as much in this spin cycle as I want them to because I'm on a sleeve. So like obviously the change is gonna be longer on the sleeve because it's a smaller circumference, but it's not as fun <laughs> when the colors hardly change every row. So that I think is what's been delaying me in working on it. That and I could not find any like bulb stitch markers for like five months. So I finally just ordered some new ones so I can finally do that again. 
but I did work on it a little bit, but not, I feel like it's not been enough that it's worth showing. Like, I feel like I'm not gonna show that until it's just done. But I wanna finish, if I can, all of my sweater whips before May, so that the fun things that happen in May, I can kind of just start, start anew. So in May, I am going to be going to London for the summer for work. So I start May 13th and I will be there working until August 2nd. And then I'm probably going to take a few days off beforehand and like two weeks off at the end to travel. And we're very much looking forward to it. So I am going to be without my stash for three months, which means I will either be making a lot of acquisitions or knitting a lot of socks or just making people bring me yarn every time they come visit me or buying a lot of yarn or all of the above. So I would like to leave kind of on a fresh start, but also when I get back in late August, mid to late August, I want to kind of come back to a fresh start too so that I'm not thinking, where was I on this pattern? Where was I on that? I can just start making the fall knits all over again. So I'm very much looking forward to it. I was supposed to go originally in 2020, but then COVID. So this is finally my time to go. I'm, it's gonna be so much fun. I can't wait. I'm gonna have my fun European girl vacation again, but working. It's gonna be like study abroad, but adult version. <laughs> so I'm thinking it's going to be a lot of weekend trips away and looking forward to being there for the summer. It'll be very nice. So that is the main driver behind wanting to finish all of the sweaters that are around me at the moment and not around me at the moment so that I can come back, fresh start, and work on some new sweaters for you all in the fall. Um, and maybe the summer is just gonna be a lot of sock talk. Who knows? I have a feeling it won't be, but like sock talk, tank tops, who knows? I don't think, so I know someone that went last year um, and through my company and I'm staying at the same apartments that they stayed at. So I know that there's no air conditioning in the apartments. So I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of socks knit by me if it's a hot summer. Cause I'm not thinking I'm gonna be wanting to work on a sweater if it's hot outside and I don't have air but we'll see. So that is the update. I'm going to get to winding up the yarn for my dad's sweater. Maybe a few other things that need to get wound up. Pretend like I'm gonna make some progress on my tessellated and wind up another skein of that while I have everything out. But I hope you're well. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will talk to you next time. Bye.